This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report, and we are live in Copenhagen. The Obama administration's moved a step closer to regulating greenhouse gases. On Monday, the Environmental Protection Agency said six gases, including carbon dioxide and methane, endanger the environment and public health. The move would allow the EPA to take action against greenhouse gases without needing congressional approval. EPA Administrator Lisa Jackson made the announcement Monday at a news conference in Washington. Today's action is a step towards enduring pragmatic solutions to the enormous challenge of climate change. It is a step towards innovation, investment, and implementation of technologies that reduce harmful emissions. <clears throat> the EPA announcement came on the first day of the COP15 climate summit here in Copenhagen. The European Commission applauded the decision, saying it would be a boost to the negotiations aimed at crafting a new global agreement to curb greenhouse gases. President Obama is attending the talks on the summit's last day. He's expected to commit the U.S. to an emissions cut of 17 percent by 2020, compared to 2005 levels. That falls far short of the cuts recommended by the world's top scientific body on global warming, the U.N. Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. They've called on developed countries to cut emissions by between 25 to 40 percent of 1990 levels. For a discussion on U.S. policy on climate change, we're joined by two guests. John Hickenlooper is the mayor of Denver. He's participating in a panel discussion on the role of public transportation in reducing carbon emissions. He won the 2009 Mayor's Climate Protection Award for a large city. And Damon Moglen is with us. He's the Global Warming Campaign Director for Greenpeace USA. We welcome you both to Democracy Now! Uh, Damon, let's begin with you. The significance of the EPA's decision, carbon dioxide and methane among the six gases considered dangerous. Well, I think that this is an important step, <clears throat> but it's only a step. It's only a first step, really, in a regulatory process that needs to move ahead very, very rapidly. At the same time, I think it's hard not to see the timing of the announcement as a very political one. The fact is the U.S. arrives at Copenhagen putting very little on the table. In fact, right now the U.S. is really the number one impediment in these negotiations. And other countries are demanding more. They want to see the U.S. having much stronger emissions reductions, and they want to see money on the table for the developing countries who are on the cutting edge of climate change. And in all reality, this announcement does not increase either of those things, nor does it begin the process of immediately regulating greenhouse gases in the United States. Just to clarify this issue of 17 percent, 20 percent, 1990, 2005, I think we're going to have to address this every day. Well, I'm afraid we do have to address it every day. It's really very sad, because the entire planet is really operating on the idea that we need to be using 1990 target levels and baseline. The entire scientific community is using this 1990 level. The United States and the Obama administration have now announced, no, we're going to use the 2005 base level. So what we now have is a very confusing situation with everybody in the world using a series of numbers and the U.S. using a different series of numbers. So that when we say people are calling for 20 to 45, 49 percent, uh, and the U.S. is proposing 17, that 17 doesn't compare to the 20, because that does, doesn't sound so bad. It does not compare in any way. The real Why? figure is that the U.S. is putting on the table an emissions reduction of 4 percent, as compared with 25 to 40 percent that the international science community is telling us we need to have by 2020 to stop catastrophic climate change. Mayor Hickenlooper, what about the U.S. position? First address the EPA and then this issue of what the U.S. brings to the table here. <clears throat> I think the EPA stepping in, uh, clearly CO2, methane, these six gas gases are pollutants. There, there can't be any question. So I don't think there's a there shouldn't be a lot of discussion about whether the EPA has the jurisdiction or the authority. Uh, I think the devil will be in the details. How do they move forward? What kind of regulations do they create? Uh, do they avoid some of the bureaucracy and, and, and find those places where they can be effective and efficient? Uh, you know, the, the problem with the United States, the reason President Obama is in such, such a difficult position is somehow we are still so polarized over this issue. After all this study and so much science, I mean, science, 
you know, in my previous life, I actually was a, I got a master's in, in geology and earth science, earth and environmental science, and it's messy, it's hard, right? There's a lot of noise and chatter, and there's always gonna be some debate about a specific data set here or a data set there, but we need to bring those skeptics, I mean, some of them are so unreasonable that you can't, you can't put more time in them, but a lot of the skeptics, we need to bring them together, sit down, and continue to work through this and bring them over to our side, because I think, uh, there's a reason why Obama, it's not because he's a coward or he's a, a you know, 17 percent is something he felt that he could sell. and Four percent. Well, it's, it, exactly, but he, that, the number that he thought he could sell in the United States, which is a, a minimal number, right? It's a, it's a much smaller, more modest target than anyone really uh, who's, who's dealing with the problem is, is comfortable with. And yet politically in, our, in the United States today, it, you know, it reminds me a little bit of, of slavery, of, of Lincoln having to deal, if you look how moderate Lincoln was, you know, in, in 1856, 1858, 1859, even as he was getting elected. I mean, it's an intergenerational problem that has been, you know, intensely polarizing. And I think what Obama's trying to do is thread the needle and bring the, the country together around this issue. And I think I, my, my belief, this is nothing, I have no inside knowledge, but I think he's trying to find some moderate goals that we can all accept agree as a country this is a problem here's a target we're going to move forward and then accelerate that as he gets a, a broader consensus you quoted abraham lincoln yesterday when i bumped into you in the hallways here at the bella center well one of lincoln's uh when lincoln was first the uh, first lincoln douglas debate someone asked him he was running for the senate in 1858 long before anyone ever thought he'd be president he, i mean he lost that bid for the senate uh and they asked him whether maybe he should be considering the supreme court and Lincoln said you, that they were missing the point that it was about public sentiment. And he said, he said, with public sentiment, nothing can fail. Without it, nothing can succeed. And that is why those who mold public sentiment go deeper than those who enact statutes, legislators, or those who pronounce decisions, uh, judges. And I think that's part of why Obama might be the right person at the right time, is that he really is trying to mold public sentiment first and, and recognizes that that is critically important. Damon Moglen of Greenpeace. Well, I think um, I think the president does indeed have a very difficult uh, situation on his hands. I think that the fossil fuel industry has been very effective at writing the climate legislation right now in the United States. We have a situation in which the legislation in the Congress hands out billions and billions of dollars to the coal industry, the very people that got us in this trouble, but does not invest adequately in green technology and efficiency technology. Uh, the Congress has not given Mr. Obama what he needs to come to these negotiations and act in an ambitious way. And I think he's challenged uh, right now to make a very critical decision. As the President of the United States, he has huge powers that he could be using to directly begin to bring down emissions and bring money to the table. And I think the real fear is that if he doesn't do that, if he does not act in the dramatic leadership way that he could be, these negotiations will yield very little, or they could break down. What could he do? Well, I think that, for example, through the EPA, we could actually see direct regulation of the fossil fuel industry. We could begin, over these next years, to begin to really bring down emissions. We could stop constructing new dirty fossil fuel facilities. Earlier in the program, you talked about brand new facilities opening. How can we talk about recognizing climate change and continue to open the very facilities that we know are creating climate change? So Mr. Obama can do a tremendous amount. He does not need to be waiting for the Congress. In fact, the Congress is getting in the way of him leading. Uh, this decision yesterday, the EPA classifying carbon and methane dangerous to public health, does it change what can happen in terms of legislation or White House edict? Well, I, I think that that's a very good question, and I think it's a question that Mr. Obama has to answer. The, the press release was written in a very careful way yesterday. It makes very clear that the president, in fact, is calling on Congress to legislate our response to climate change, and it makes clear that the announcement is made because the Supreme Court told them to issue this announcement. The big question is, Mr. Obama now needs to say quite categorically, I am going to regulate greenhouse gases using the EPA, and he needs to come here to Copenhagen and say, given that we can regulate directly now, I can give you a much higher emissions reduction level, and I'm ready to put that on the, on the table. We can regulate directly. I mean, the EPA can just do it without s congressional legislation. Under our Clean Air Act, they can do it, and the Supreme Court told them, get doing it. What do you think of this, Mayor Hickenlooper? I'm not sure I'd go quite that far that that was what the Supreme Court was saying. 
um, although I'm not a lawyer, so I <coughs> would yield to, to high, those with higher powers. Uh, you know, I look at, at some of the ways that the Obama administration, they're doing things that no other administration has done. It, it, you know, you talk to lobbyists that have been working in Washington for 50 years. It's the first time that the EPA is working hand in glove with the Department of Transportation and, and with the Housing and Urban Development, with HUD, so that if, they, if they're going to give a, a billion dollars to a city to build a transit system, how do they make sure that they get changes in zoning and, and, and greater density around each of those transit stops? How 